There's a bee in here. It's just against the window, trying to figure out how to get out, I hope. Please leave, Mr. B. Guys, recently, Clay de Poe came out with the holiday exclusives. A lot of people are. I just ordered my Tom Ford, and that will be up soon, as soon as it gets here. And I wanted to partake a little bit. I, I, I'm a little iffy on limited editions because they're not available for a long time. But that seems to be what's happening this year so far. There aren't a lot of new products, but there are some limited editions, so we're going to take a die. I wanted to do something autumnal, thus I have my autumnal shirt on. And I did get the lipstick, which is limited edition. It looks like this, and it is so pretty. The packaging, gorgeous. But I didn't really care for the quad that they were showing. I really didn't think it would be something I would get a lot of use of. I thought, I don't have anything from Clay de Poe when it comes to eyeshadows. I've never tried their eyeshadows. So I found a color story that I thought would be great for a fall look. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that I ordered the refill. Yeah, I did. It's not the end of the world. I was just a little surprised. But this is the color story that I chose. And isn't that lovely? And won't it go lovely with my shirt? Hmm? I think so. I think so. So we're going to do almost a full face of Clay de Poe. It's been a while since I've used their foundation, which I absolutely love. I have it in two colors now. So the first one I got was an O color for okra, which I can't say correctly. And the other one is B for beige, but it's not really beige. It's a little bit pink. And the one that started with an O was actually very pretty on me, but it definitely had a peach kind of undertone. And this one isn't quite right either, so I'm going to mix them together. This is such a beautiful foundation, I, I can't tell you. And I did compare to the Kogendo, which I also have, and this just has much more coverage. So for me, you know, you're going out, you want a little bit more coverage, this is the one that I would go for. Here are both the colors. Uh, the top one, I think, is the B color, and the bottom one is the O color. And I'm just going to mix them together on my hand, and we're going to go... I'm a little bit red today, so this will be a good example of what kind of coverage. It has the rose scent to it, and it is a little bit thick, as you can see. It is a cream. And fingers. I love a finger application, but I'll smooth out with my Beauty Blender. And I'm putting most of this over my redness. A little bit goes a long way, but because I wanted to mix a couple of colors, I ended up getting probably twice as much foundation than I need on my hand. I'm going to pull down a little bit. You know what I'm going to do since I have so much left? I'm going to put some on my Beauty Blender and just do the teeniest bit around the chest, but I really don't want to get this on my shirt. But doesn't that help? And now I'm just going to take a look. <laughs> it really kind of blends itself, even though I'm blind as a bat. Go over with the Beauty Blender just to make it sure everything is taken care of. Yeah, I think this combination of these two, really, really good color for me. I'm going to pull you in and take a look at the skin. It looks so pretty. This is such a beautiful, beautiful foundation that doesn't get enough love. And I just adore it. How could I not? So easy to apply to. Beautiful. Now for concealer, I have the old version, which I found was a bit drying. I'm going to put it right here. It's right there. And I think the color will probably work okay. And I'm going to pick it up with my finger. And I'm hoping that that will make it a little bit better for me. A little yellow actually but it'll work okay wow great on this eye mainly because this eye is not as puffy as this eye but 
So I just went over a little bit. I didn't do a hard blend with this, but just right under the eye and uh, give it a little bit of more smoothness. And I'm going to pull you in and you can take a look. I think it looks really, really, really good. And I do think this is the old formula. I had heard that the new formula, which came out maybe a year ago, and I had just bought this one, so I wasn't going to buy it again. I heard that it wasn't as drying on the eyes, but I find that if you put it on your hand first, it's actually not very drying. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but here's my base, and now let's get into some new to me. <laughs> so let's do some swatches first. Off the top, I say this one has some sparkle, and this one, look, oh my god, these are so creamy. Holy moly! Wow, these are really creamy. Look at those colors. Boom. Oh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. And now I'm going to go in with this one, which is more of a sparkly kind of color. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I really don't know what to do. I was thinking of bringing this into the picture, but it is pretty dark. But now that I'm thinking, well, my concealer is holding up and really canceled all of my darkness, that's not a bad thing. I find that if you have dark under eyes, going in with dark colors for lining down here, for instance, just makes everything look darker. But I'm going to give it a try. So I think I'm going to start this all over the eyes. Start with the lightest and go to the darkest. This Sonia G brush. It's a pinched ferrule, but it's not a really a flat brush, but it's kind of a a flat brush hybrid. And I do have a little bit of concealer on my eyes, and this color is very, very flush tone for me. There is some radiance, some reflective quality to this. This might be a better color to put on top if you want a little bit lightness and to put under the brows. So let's just do that. Yeah, really pretty under the brow. Now I'm going in with my Chikahoto most used brush right here. I'm going to go in with this khaki color. And see what happens. So this kind of brush is different. The Sonia G is a goat and this is a squirrel, which is much, much softer. So it'll be a good test. That's really, really lovely. There's no line. I mean, I did back and forth, but I don't feel like I really needed to. My favorite green palette is actually from KKW, who is not around anymore, although I think I heard that she's coming back. But, you know, I'm not a Kardashian fan. I'm, I, I'm not into it. It's just, it's a very, very good palette, and it's my favorite green. Charlotte Tilbury has one. But everything shines in that, and I just don't want that much shine. It's very hard when you're hooded, you have a lot of shine on it. It just brings your hood forward. And I'm just going to build and, and put a little bit more on. What I have now I think would be great for a day look, but I think I want to go a little bit heavier. And it builds beautifully, you can tell eye to eye. I don't know about you guys, but I live in Los Angeles, and it's just been in the past couple of days where we've had those really beautiful days where the sky is super clear, there's big fluffy clouds. It's definitely cool at night. I put on the heat for the last two nights, um, but it's not too warm during the day, but it's still just beautiful. And the light this time of year, it's just, there's a brightness to it that I love so, so much. I think a lot of us enjoy fall no matter where we live and everywhere in the country has something different going on in some areas it's the turning of the trees you know all the different colors coming out we don't really get that here but we have low pollution and perfect perfect weather okay i think for this color right here it's too dark to bring up I, the green is definitely going to be my transition to the brow bone and I'm going to put this, and I'm taking a fluffy brush, and maybe that's not the best way to go. Maybe a finger or maybe a flat. But I just want to see how these perform. And put it on the lid. Whoa. Okay. 
just picked up a little too much, I think. I have to be very careful because I don't want any drop down. I love this. I'm going to close my eyes. The On the lid, the way that I applied, because I had that olive down first, there's not a huge difference, but it does something to the eyes, I think, to have a dark color on the lid. I know most people like to put something light on the lid, and I do that a lot too, but it doesn't work for everybody, especially if you're very, very hooded. And this gives me kind of a definition without having to do a liner. That is so pretty. I absolutely feel like I put on liner or something, but I don't have the hardness that liner can give me. Okay, this is the Rever 03 brush, and you can see it has a small tip, but it's not the smallest of these. And I'm going to go in with this color. It just picks up beautifully, so be a little careful. And do, I don't think I need lining, but I kind of want to see what's going on here. I think for evening, this is a color that I would absolutely work with. And I'm going to do a little under here. Not a lot. And just hit that with my finger so it's really soft. Because now I think I'm going into evening. And I'm going to have to fix this up a little bit. I think I just took off some of my concealer. I'm going to go back in to this shade with a small flat brush. And I think this is a Hakuhodo. But I don't know what number it is because the number came off. But look in the description box below and you will see I'm listing these brushes. There's three or four of them. And I have the numbers down there. And I put it there because I knew that these numbers would come off. Just opening up a little bit. Okay, now I definitely have to clean up. I feel like I've made my under eyes a little bit messy. So I'm going to turn off the camera and be right back and we're going to go on with the rest of the face. Okay, now that I put the concealer on again, I feel like it. everything else kind of has sunk in, warmed up to the skin, meaning the foundation. And now the concealer looks like, whoa. But I have a feeling it's going to do the same thing. So we're going to have to give this 10 minutes or so before we see what it really looks like. But I want to go on with blush. And for blush, my favorite cream blush and my favorite clean blush period is this. But you guys have seen me use this so, so many times. And Laura Geller sent me these new products. They're blushes with little sponges on them. And I pulled out a couple that I thought might be appropriate. We're just going to do a little bit of swatching. This one is called Poppy Peach, and it's in big print so I can see it. So that, I think, is a possibility. I definitely want to do something a little bit warm. And this one is True Tawny, and that might work too. That's why I pulled these three, because I thought, mm, these are going to work. And here is Refreshing Rose. See, times like this, I wish we could have live interaction, so you can tell me what do you think. I'm thinking the Tawny, actually. And then if, it, if I feel I need a little bit more color, then I'll go in with the Poppy. I'm just going to pick it up with my Beauty Blender. And because it's Tawny, I feel like I can kind of do a contour blush. And by the way, there's something really interesting about these. I'm going to show you when I'm done with this. But I know a lot of people don't like that sponge applicator situation because they say it's unsanitary. For me, it doesn't bother me. It's my face. But whatever. I'm weird. It comes with an extra. So if you find, oh, it's so filthy, you, you got an extra already built in. I think this works really, really nice. The other day I did a video with powders and I, I knew inevitably I would leave something off. And I did, my Clay de Peau powder. It sits right out here and sometimes when something is always available to you, you don't see it anymore, if that makes sense. Comes with a powder puff. And my favorite way to use this because it is a little messy. So first you take off the lid and then there's this, which this goes on top of, and then it's a net. and. It's a light powder. It has a touch of pink in it. And my favorite way to use it 
is to put it on the puff and I'm just going to work it into the puff a little bit. I know this is weird, but this works for me. And then I'm going to take my Wayne Goss brush, which somebody told me in the comments that Wayne Goss said he is going to get back to making brushes. How nice for us because this brush is a must and I will be ordering a backup because I don't ever want to be without it. I use it every single day and just do a little bit of powdering. Now because it's pink, I have the opportunity to kind of correct the concealer color because I feel it's too warm. See what a difference? Correcting with powders that have color to them is something I don't hear anybody talking about, but it's a thing. It's a thing. Now I think my under eyes look like they match my face a little bit better. I went on with the Westman Atelier I Love You Mascara, which I thought has always been available, but I've been getting emails lately with a mascara and she's like, it's finally out, except for it's in different packaging. So I'm not sure what the story is, but I like it because it gives me really full lashes and I don't have mascara from Clay de Poe. So we have a little bit of that. I have to do my brows. Okay, so I did my brows, I did my mascara, I did a little bit of liner, just a little bit, and I am feeling super autumnal. And now I'm going to go on with the one product I got from the limited edition, which is a lip color, and this is in a matte. And online it was really hard to tell. Is this a coral? Is it a pink? And I think it's, it's a coral pink. <laughs> That's why I was confused. And yeah, it's a coral and it's a pink. I see a pinky nature to this, but I see an orangey nature to it as well. So that's kind of full opacity, but I think you could also just uh, do a little blotting and get a little bit less. But this is my autumnal look, you guys, using Clay Debo products, and uh, two are new to me. One. This one is from their limited edition holiday, and then the khaki eyeshadow. And I'll put all the names down below in the subtitles in case you haven't noticed, because I didn't bring my magnifying glass in and I can't see anything. But I can see that this is really, really a pretty, pretty look. And even though these shadows are kind of on the darker side, I wouldn't look at that and say, those are colors that tone-wise are going to work with me. I feel like I can wear this on a daily basis. This doesn't feel like it's too dark. But at the same time, I feel that you could get a very dark, beautiful look, emphasizing this color a little bit more than I did, where I used it just for a liner, put it underneath and on top. But I put this on the lid, this on the lid, and really smoking it out will be an interesting evening look for a holiday that is the unexpected because the color is so unusual. It's kind of a, I don't know, I feel that there's a green and a blue in here, like a teal, and then on the hand it, it looks a little bit more green, um, but outside it might be something else. But either way you look at it, my first time using any eyeshadow from Clay de Poe, and I'm very, very impressed, and I'm surprised that I really haven't seen a lot of people talk about Clay de Poe eyeshadows. And um, that's going to wrap it up, you guys. That's going to be it. I want to know what looks interesting to you out of everything that I put on my face today. And what is the weather like where you are? Is it beginning to feel like fall? Did that happen four weeks ago? And what your favorite season is? And uh, Yeah, I want to know all of it. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope it was helpful. And I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart. And I'm wishing you good health.